And I'm not saying that it's not a culture. I'm saying it's not our culture. It is not Black culture. It is not African culture. It has nothing to do with us other than the expression, other than the corrupt practices. We do things the way we do things because it's essentially us. We cannot make music that is not funky. We cannot make music. They talk about, um, there was a saying when I was a kid, folks would talk about uh, soul music and all of that. And the saying was that if you have to ask what soul is, that means you ain't got it. Because that's just a part, an innate part of what it is we are, how we do shit. Whatever we do, we get into country music. We fuck that shit up. We got into basketball. Used to be all white. We funk that shit up because that's who we are. So they took those practices and they used them to corrupt the values. And so now the values have been corrupted to the point that they're not our values. We don't own the expression, let alone the values. So is it black culture or is it us putting a black face on somebody else's values? If I asked you to get a piece of paper and something to write with and to make a numerical list of all the things that you would be willing to die for. How long is your list? The part of 48. Willing to die for. The part of 48. Willing to die for. How long is your list? What is the tribal self? The part of 48. The tribal self is the goal above the immediate acquaintances of the social. Willing to die for. The family, the people you know, how long is your list? So the connection with the ancestors is tied into the tribal self. What does that mean? That means that the tribal self constantly reminds us that we don't have the right to claim independence. It's a power. Once again, this is your Panther 48. This is your brother, Psych, Helen out of Texas. I got with me the uh, regular brothers in the Panther 48, brother Robert Wall Williams, calling out of San Diego. All power to people, folks. I have brother uh, E calling out of Florida. Howdy. Have, <laughs> He's a power. We, we have a couple of special guests on the, on the uh, show with us tonight to uh, dive into this topic. I got the uh, brother Sammy Ace hailing out of East Dallas, Texas. What's going on? What's poppin', man? How y'all doing? And I have my brother Richard, uh, my brother Rich, uh, calling out of San Antonio, Texas. Oh, peace and all power, man. It's it's, it's great to be back. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I lost my voice for a second, but yeah, I'm here. I'm ready. Let's let's chop it. Let's build. All right, all right. All right, today's conversation, we're going to build on... Is there a such thing as black culture? Does black culture? What? Yeah, that's what we going into. What? Does black culture exist? And before we get into it, one of the things that we always like to do, you know, uh, uh, brother War always like to uh, say that in the Panther Party that you always deal with your three Ds. What are your three Ds, brother War? Find, develop, and then defend. So we're going. <laughs> We're gonna define what culture is. Cause a lot of times, see one of the reasons or, or what's so important about us uh, breaking these definitions down is a lot of times we talk about subject matter and you can have three, four, five different people talking about a subject matter using the same words, but have a different understanding of what those words mean. And that's why they can never get to a, to, to a point of view because they'll hear one word and have a different <laughs> viewpoint of what that one word means. So we like to make sure that we define, we like to nail that word down. And then we start developing on that word or on that idea. And from whatever point of view we're coming from, we like to defend that idea. We like to analyze it and then synthesize it and make it real or bring it into reality. So culture, the most basic, simple definition I can give you for culture I'm going to give you a simple one, then I'm going to break it down. The most simple one I can give you for culture is a common way of life shared by a group of people with common experiences. And usually those people, let me say that again, a common way, a, a way of life shared by a, a group of people with, <laughs> with, with a shared, uh, 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 a common group of experiences. And usually that people, have the same have a language in common 
they usually have the same pitch was in common, which means the slang talk or conversations that they use to define their reality, their, their metaphors, you know, their, 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 their symbolisms. They have a religion in common. They have art. I'm going to break down 12 aspects of it real quick. Language, arts and literature, economy, customs and traditions, norms, symbols, religion, social organization, artifacts, rituals, and individuals versus communitarianism. They, they, they are people that have a culture usually have these things in common. They operate from that, that common perspective. Now, a culture is the foundation of any groups of pe- a group of people. A culture becomes the foundation in a book called Who Are We by Dr. Kirk Herrod. I mean, Dr. Kirk Herrod, he said that culture was indispensable in, de- in defining whether or not a group of people would succeed in society or fail. And he said that a great example <coughs> of that are the only two people on the planet who completely had their culture almost ripped apart. And that was African-Americans and Native Americans people who completely had their culture almost destroyed. These are the people that find themselves in the, in, in the worst possible positions in society. So this is what, on a basic and most simple level, what culture is. A lot of times people are, are, are confuse culture with civilization. They think culture and civilization is the same thing. And it's not. To have a civilization, you usually have to have culture, but you don't necessarily have civilization if, if you have culture. But you have to have culture to have a civilization. And many uh, scholars argue, you know, about the definitions of civilization and what civilization is. But it's like some, for, for instance, some scholars say that the first civilization on the planet started with the first people to uh, create the written word. Other scholars say that the first civilization on the planet started with the first people to introduce agriculture. But one of the things that you have to have or, or that the scholars say that you have to have when dealing with, when defining a society as civilized is a, 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 a written language, a, 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 a agriculture, basically a way of, a, a, of maintaining, growing, and herding your own food, uh, arts, and what is the fourth one? It's, it's written language, uh, arts, agriculture and oh, uh, uh, urbanization cities. Oh, urbanization, no doubt. It, it, uh, incidentally, the word civilization, the root of that word, it literally means city. So urbanization is the, is the fourth one that you have that you have to that's required to have civilization. Them are the four basics. Now it's seven. And when you add that seven, one of the seven is culture. Because when people live together in an urban environment, they usually develop common ways and common ways of behavior so that leads us to this discussion that we decide to have tonight and that we'll ask even people that watch this later we would like you to leave it in the comments what you think is there a black culture yes or no all you got to do is just type it in the comments yes or no but we're going to get into the discussion hopefully y'all listen to it and we're going to have differences of opinions on it and one thing i know about the brothers on this panel tonight that they will bring the heat to defend their perspective so i'm going to start with the rapper on the panel I'm gonna start with the rapping brother on the panel. Sammy A. Who represents represent, uh, uh, something that has been called the hip hop culture. Mm-hmm. Is there, in your opinion, a black culture in 2023? It, it, it saddens me to respond uh, to such a question because it, it, it is a culture, but the culture is underground. Uh, at a time we should be on top of shit. You know, we we still the minority in a whole lot of ways. Uh, and we're watching other cultures come behind us in advance. Uh, but but because of the lack of togetherness <clears throat> and, and the lack of foundation, it, it's just, you know, it's, it's still far too much dividing us. I, I would say, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, the uh, really list theories work to a science. We've and we've been through way too too much to not be responding in a, in a better way. Uh, but you know, I've been fortunate to to to, to meet some brothers, that's you, some underground, some underground kings. You know, so I know the movement still exists. 
you know it's just it's, it's just like a, to society it's like a secret society it's not enough of us you know it, it, it's not enough being done you know it, it's, it's just I don't know but as far as hip hop I, I feel like we're we're supposed to be a great part of that culture too, because this is a big part of us. Uh, probably the most influential part part of us, you know, is hip hop. You know, we able to express ourselves in a lot of ways. We're also failing on culture, you know, when it, when it comes to when it comes to hip hop, you know. Um, so it, it saddens me really to come in on that. I feel like I represent hope when it comes to that, you know. Uh, so it, it still is a hope. But, you know, I, I just think, you know, what, what we're showing from a hip hop perspective is is the total opposite. You know, we, we <laughs> you know, we, we're showing the total opposite, you know, every and I've said it quite a few times in my head and out loud now. You know, every every month, you know, a rapper slang is black on black crime, it's, it's live, you know, it's on the internet, we putting on for the world. When we finally gain success, what look at what we're doing with it. We're going against each other with it. You know, uh, we taking each other out. Uh, the togetherness and in, in the, in, in the power that should come behind the movement and the finance is not happening. You know, everybody's, uh, we, we got a uh, personality fad. Everybody's caught up in their image. You know, nobody, nobody wants to, you know, uh, be 100, you know, with the youth, be 100 with the culture and put themselves out there for that. You know, they, they're so wrapped up in the image and, and the money that, the image is bringing them, but the huh. image, image is killing them. Huh. You know what I'm saying? It's killing us. So, so I mean, that's that's my take on it. Yes, it do exist, you know, but the definition might as well not even exist if we're huh. if we're gonna respond to it as a whole in the <clears throat> way that we're responding to it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I passed so, the mark on so that. So, you saying? So, what are you saying? Are you saying that there is a culture, or there's not a culture, or there I'm, is a culture, I'm, but I'm, it's I'm, so embarrassing that you hate to claim it? What are you saying? It, it, what you it's, do it's, 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 it's the culture is underground. I'm saying there is a culture. You know what I'm saying? But it's 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 like it's a secret society. Everybody else culture is speaking value. You know what I'm saying? And their posi they position they self where they'll never go through, you know what I'm saying, the shit that they done went through before. You know what I'm saying? They position they self. They put they self in a position where that history repeating itself is, is, is damn near impossible. But us, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like we, we still at the bottom of the total pole. And, and the movement is far too underground you know, for the shit that's going on, because it's it's, it's 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 pitiful, man. I'm embarrassed, you know, and I feel some type of way, man. You know, when I look at the youth amongst me, you know, I was thinking, you know, they should be better than we were, you know. Uh, you know, I was thinking along those lines, you know, but I can't say I see, you know, things getting better. Uh, it's in a lot of ways it's gotten worse. Uh, I can dig it. I don't feel you. So, yeah. All right. So, he's so saying there is a culture, you know? I can, I can see that. So, what do you, what do you think, Rich? What's on your mind? Brother, is there such thing as black culture? Absolutely. I'm talking about there's there's no culture. I can't even I can't even fathom a culture that didn't start with black people. I say I see our culture everywhere, from signs and symbols. I'm talking about if I if I simply look around and think about the distance from one wall to the next, the measurements, the mathematics that was created, the mathematics that was developed, 
to define that distance was created by black people. That's black culture. When I look up in the when I when I when I open up the uh the newspaper, I go I go to, I scroll through on Facebook and I see the zodiac and I see Capricorn in, in Pisces or Scorpio and Taurus. I'm like, that right there was developed by black people. That's black culture. You know, when I that when I we did these these uh those phonetic words coming out of my mouth right now, the ability to, to make sounds vibrate and to communicate ideas from person to person, mind to mind, from thing to thing, that's black culture. When I sit down and type a text, which you know, you know the, the the language, the characters, where they where they developed that, where they came from, came from black people. That's black culture. When I look up in the sky, and I'm like, my partner asked me a long time ago. He was like, "Man, you ever seen the black star?" I'm like, hey, "How the fuck you gonna see a black star?" He said, "They're the biggest star. They're the biggest stars in the universe. They're the biggest stars in the night sky." I'm sitting here like, "Yeah, there's some good weed." <laughs> We tripped. <laughs> it's some good weed. He said all the distance in between all the stars, like all the space in between those stars, in, in between the white stars, those are black stars. Those are the biggest stars in the sky. They bigger than the sun. You know what I mean? So everywhere, from music to language to architecture to mathematics to symbols, you know, it's black culture. Absolutely, black culture does exist. Even though when I see uh, the five-point star, a six-point star, when I see these things, I, I instantly, my, when I see the, the, the cortices, you know what I mean, that's on the side of an ambulance, that's black culture. When I go by, when I when I drive by CVS and it says pharmacy and it has an R with the X in it, I know that that originates in Africa. That came from black people. That's black culture. Even though it's even though it's been translated or, or transliterated or it's been uh, uh, transmuted over the ages, it still represents the, the originality of black culture. Black culture is real. It doesn't, I'm talking shoes, clothes. Man, I'm talking about uh, when, you, when you pick up a spoon, black people melted metals. Black people, I'm talking about uh, forged stones and monuments. I see these things. I see rock art. I see stone art. I see uh, 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 metal art. I say, wow, look at this. That's black culture. It is absolutely real, and we're we're so we're so immersed in it, we're so deep in it. Sometimes we can't even feel it because we are black culture. So I, I most definitely, truly, without a shadow of a doubt, know that black culture is real. It's phenomenal. It's uh, it's it's beyond that. So I, I absolutely have to say yes. There is a black culture, and we are that. So, most definitely. All right. Walk. Well. You would have to follow behind that. Yeah, but the way I follow behind it is a little different. Because to me, when we talk about black culture, going back to define, before we get into development and defending, you have to define what we mean by black. Because first and foremost, when we talk about culture and we say black culture, we don't all agree on what level of 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 a degree of blackness that we talking about what are we talking about Afri africans in here in captive america or uh, we talk about uh our people on the on the continent of africa we talk about across the diaspora then we have to go into that first because depending on what what reference point we're coming from to me goes into what we what do we call in a culture so the first thing i would have to say on that is i would like to break culture down a little bit a little bit more deeply no to me, to me I would it. say, to me I would say there's root culture, then there's culture, and then there's subculture. Absolutely. So, when we talk about is there a black culture, there is definitely a black culture. If we're talking about root culture, if we're, it, it, from the standpoint of us of of black of, of black or I was referred to as African being the the first on this planet. Everything everything sprouts out from there so yes there is black root culture now when we talk about us here on the continent of uh, of, of the americas then when we say what is there a black culture there is not a black root culture here definitely not because everything has been appropriated stolen and regurgitated back to us from the standpoint of throw up and when i say throw up I'm saying when you take something through a system, digest yeah. it, and then spit out the waste product, or or what it comes out out, out uh, one hole or the other, and then fed back to a people, 
that has been stripped of their identity, stripped of their root culture, stripped of their way of life. No, there ain't a culture from that standpoint. Then there is a subculture. So then I would say, yes, there's a black subculture here, but there's not a black root culture here because a black mm. root culture puts you in a position of empowerment, puts you in a position of being in charge. Exactly. Makes, makes, makes you the one that has, has, has determined how everything else is, is operating. So no, I don't consider there to be a black root culture here in America for our people. But you can say there's a black subculture here. Oh yeah, and I leave at that. I can go down. I can break it down more later. I'm gonna stop that. That's it. No doubt. All right. All right. All right. right. <laughs> oh, oh, he back with welcome, the, he got his shades on. Don't make me take my shades out. All right. Now, shades on. Welcome, the welcome person, black. The only person welcome. ain't said. The only person ain't said nothing was E. But I'm gonna get in here right. I'm gonna take E's chance because I know that this is gonna excite E and make E uh, throw E alley throw E alley oop. I'm gonna okay. answer that and I'm gonna come at it from a different perspective. I'm gonna come at it from I'm gonna play God's advocate right now. Oh, now, based on the actual factual definition of what culture actually is, if we if we deal with it from that point of view, matter of fact, I'm gonna read the definition of culture from the book. Who Are We by Dr. Kurt Harris. There's a whole lot of definition we can give, but I'm gonna read the definition right here. No and doubt. then I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. It said culture refers to the behaviors, beliefs, and adaptive mechanisms that a group of people sharing a common experience have constructed to cope with their environment. It is learned, taught, and unique to a group of people. A group of people's unique culture is crucial and irreplaceable for their prosperity. The disruption of a group's culture impedes the collective accomplishments of the group and prevents the individuals in that group from achieving their potential. It is no coincidence that the very high rates of alcoholism, unemployment, and failure to find a place in society are found in two groups whose culture was nearly destroyed by Europeans, African Americans and Native Americans. That's the uh, quote I was talking about earlier when I was talking about the book, Who Are We?, which I think is a pretty good book. Now, when we understand the, the definition of culture as a, a group of people who have common experiences, therefore they produce a common culture, a common way of life, same languages, religions, things of this nature, then we cannot dispute that there is a black culture. Problem is, the black culture that we are now, that we have met now manifested is not a culture 100% completely founded on our originality. And usually a group of people construct a culture for, for to be the foundation for the benefit of the development of their civilization. No doubt. And, and if you understand that, when we look at this from a warrior point of view, if you understand that perspective and you understand everything that Dr. Kirk just said, uh, uh, when he said that a group of people's unique cultures it is irreplaceable for the foundation of their, or basically for their coming up. If you understand that and you are a wise and devious enemy, then if you want to eliminate a group of people, then what you would do is that you would appropriate their culture. What you would do is you would find ways to intermingle your, your devilishment into their culture and have them unwittingly practicing a culture that's basically killing them that will be that will be detrimental to them so it is a culture it's just a dysfunctional one our exactly. music sang to our sings to our death our, our quote-unquote art praises our murder you know yeah, what I'm saying? we worship our killers we worship the things that are killing us we have a whole we have a whole uh, sub genre of music called trap music that Un, that we love. I love it, hell. I listen to uh, Jesus all the damn time. You know what I'm saying? If we, if we praise and worship our own destruction and we and we are built a foundation on a culture that's not benefit. I always talk about it, the baby mama, baby daddy concepts. Who else created that? Where did that come from? That has become a normal part of the of the normal modern black culture. I have to play guys at it for a minute so everybody don't attack me at once. But I, oh. and, and I would say through the, through the actual facts and 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 and, and, and a, a comprehensive understanding of the definition that you deny that there is a black culture. It's just because we don't like it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It exists. It's just one that we don't like. 
Look at Sammy. I, I, Sammy look like he want to say something. I I, I think I think uh, as far as with the, you know, as far as uh, your response to the question, my response as well as brother War, I think we're all saying the same thing, but in different but in uh, different ways. I, I don't look at it as like uh, we in disagreement at all. Because when I when I heard Brother War express his take on it, it sounded like my take, just in different language. Uh, and then you expanded. I I heard the same thing, and 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 nobody said thus far that it's not a coach, but our coach has been altered. Well, you E, know, what, you, what you what you what you think, E? Oh, my bad, Sammy. Because he you said nobody said. If there is not a coach, I want to know E's talk, but we not ain't let yet. E talk Not yet. yet. But go you ahead, know. Sammy. Go ahead and finish no. what you're saying. Nobody said it's not one. It's just been it's been altered to the point that, you know, uh we don't even know who the fuck we are no more. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. is you know, our culture is 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 gone to the highest bidder. You know, uh it just say our culture makes money for other people. We do that. We do that real good. You know what I'm saying? Our culture is for sale. You know, our culture represent others' clothing lines. You know, we, we make people millions and millions and billions. You know, if we make it something, best believe it's somebody somewhere over our head making a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? It's getting to the point where we can't even maintain ownership. You know, everything that we are, everything, everything is for sale, you know, and when and when the culture is sold out like that, you know, uh, uh, it, it ceases to be, you know, the culture that it was supposed to be. It needed to be, you know, for us. And if, if our culture was flourishing, we'll see it like we see the Hispanic culture flour flourishing now because they're put, they they they've came along and put theyself in a better position. You know what I'm saying? Than we have. You know, and now, you know, they got dibs, you know, on on on, on running society now. You yeah. know? I uh, think that honestly, I think that uh black culture is universal. You know what I mean? And you know, in the virtue, we, we teach that we teach that to uh, identify with higher ideas and within every culture you know, they, even in, in white culture, you got your trailer park trash, your dead beats, junkies, baby mama dramas, and Jerry Springer uh, phenomenons jumping out of there. You know, and some people, white people say, well, I don't identify with that part of the culture. You got some white people say, I'm not a racist. I don't identify with the racism and the treachery that my race has imposed on other people because I don't identify with that part of, the, of my history and my culture. Now, when it comes to dealing with our culture, you know, we want to identify with the parts that uh, that help that help us build our self-esteem or help us build our confidence in the parts that, you know, actually, uh, urge us into evolving or becoming a, a a better person or a better a better group of people, even if it's a small group of people. So, you know, we have to identify. You know, a lot of us identify with the parts that, or we see the parts that are, you know, uh, uh, shameful or embarrassing. So, I, I mean, you know, I try to identify with the parts of culture that that bring about that that self confidence and esteem. So, but I do see it though. I do see, I do see the I low like part. That. I, I come like from that. Still in. I like where, where you're coming from because we need okay. that for balance too. You know what I'm no saying? Doubt. We need so what, that. So what So what do y'all think about the about about uh cause cause the rest of us had something negative to say about culture, except wow. for Rich. Rich didn't have anything. Nick Rich said when he see the measurements from one wall to the other one, he see black culture. He said when he was text and he see the the the, the symbols. That make that make up the so-called letters is black culture. So what do y'all think about that? Rich is the only one that didn't say something negative to say about black culture. I think we need both though, right? You know what I'm saying? Let, they define it. Let, me that. Let me go into that. I, I look at what Rich defined as recognizing the essence of our root culture. No doubt. Fine. But again, that's that's at the top tier. That's at the top tier. From root culture, then you get your, your 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 divisional culture, and then you get a subculture. And Absolutely. when we talk about a subculture, subculture is basically a division or depart from a main culture that deals with a specific interest or inclination for belonging. In other words, I'm gonna me and my little clique, or me and these cats that like to do this specific thing, 
break apart because we have specific interests that we want to highlight over the entire group of how our people are. Kind of like I stated earlier about where well, you got some a white person that say, well, I'm not a racist. Well, that you're at that point, you're not talking about your culture because your your I mean your collective culture or your main culture because that has to do with the, the entirety of how your people collectively operate. Now no if you all want to break off and, and operate a little differently, then that goes into a subculture. But you can't speak from a subculture perspective on the culture of the, the culture that's above that. Because Absolutely. the majority of your people, the way y'all operate as a collective, if, if that is a destructive element, that is a destructive element. Because you choose not to participate in that, don't make you define that overall culture. So no now, you, now you're dealing with a sub-element of that. A culture up under that culture. You know what I mean? Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Excuse me. So, strictly speaking, if we're talking about Black folk in America, that puts Africa to the side. We're not well, talking okay. about it. So anything anybody brings up about Africa and all of that is irrelevant, except in the context of Black folk in this country. And in terms of Black folk in this country, um, again, the definition uh, of culture is lacking to me. And I can't say that there's not based on that. I think the question arises at that point is, is culture the result of a conscious effort or an unconscious effort. That's a huge part of the ter determination. You know, um, it's been said in the past, and you said it, so I'm gonna just call you Sykes, that <laughs> we can use the word black to define, to, to, to describe our people here in this country because uh, 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 in ancient times, we refer to one another as, as, as black. You know, see a brother walking across the Serengeti and say, oh, he black. But we have to understand also that words are a contextual part of culture as well. Words give birth to culture. Culture gives birth to words. And whereas Europeans saw skin tone and where we see skin tone and say, oh, you black is a indication of the surface level misunderstanding, inability to see beyond the physical that Europeans have given to us. And what I'm saying is, Psych ain't black, Rich ain't black, War ain't black, ain't nobody on here black. We brown. That's just the way it is. But Europeans except, are so uh, special except, in except, their- Except for you and Rich, y'all beige. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, man. Be, I'm funny. golden brown. I'm golden brown, <laughs> just for the record. It's still midnight, goddamn. <laughs> So this classification that was thrust upon us, black, was a superficial uh, 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 indication, a stupid one, again, because we're not black, but okay, let's roll with it. And it's been, uh, 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 matter of fact, uh, John Henry Clark said that black tells you what you look like, but it didn't tell you who you are. And it being indicative of that culture, we have to, and if, 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 if we're going to try to flip it back and say, well, we said we used to call each other that, you know, back in ancient times and whatnot. We have to keep it in a cultural context and understand that number one, the word black didn't exist at that point in time, number one. And rarely do you get languages who's, who can be translated, especially when you're talking about the extremes of black to white or African to European uh, uh, that are translated directly. Typically they're a uh, 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 an estimation of what the other word means, especially when it's coming from our languages. So when we would say something, if it was Kim or whatever it is that would refer to our skin tone, understanding who we are as African people back then, we have to understand that if I walk, if I'm walking across and I see sight and I say, oh, black, quote unquote, black, Kim, whatever it is, what I'm actually referring to is the fact that I can see the blackness of the earth. In fact, the word hue, we always, uh, I've heard it said several times, human and hue. You know, everybody thinks, oh yeah, hue comes from, uh, human comes from hue and wah, wah, wah. Hue and human are two totally different words and have nothing to do with each other. The word hue has its roots in uh, uh, no, uh, no, Norwegian, uh, what is it, Gaelic languages. Whereas uh, uh, a human has its roots more in the, the, the Proto-Indo-European uh, 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 
branch. They're two different words. Human is more related to the word humus. And I don't know if y'all, if you got into this when you was in boot camp on your vacation site doing the gardening thing, but if you've ever seen leaves, when they start getting wet and moldy and start breaking down, they get that real, real dark, dark, dark black, they turn into, that's humus. And so when we would see one another and we would say, oh, it, we would use words like commit or chem or, or, or black or whatever, the way that we would use human. Now, we were acknowledging that I can see your connection to that humus, to that earth, to that blackness. I'm not calling you black the way we do it today. Cultural context, because we're in a superficial world, black in this and black in this cipher means your skin color. That's it. There is nothing else. Now, I, must, I, now I, have, I have to disagree with you just a little bit. Just a little bit. I had to do it because I always, you know, me and you, we got to do it. You know, this is <laughs> this this fight has been existing since the beginning of time. Neo and, and Mr. Smith, you know, uh, Ali uh, and Frazier, a saw and set. You know, this has always happened. You know, God and Satan, this has always happened. We got to do this. So now here's the thing. Now let me, let's go back into a little bit of black pol black political history a little bit. Now I ain't, I ain't gonna say originally, but in context, one of our first names in this society was not black. You know, we went by the terms that our slave masters called us niggers and then Negro. Negro was such a prominent name for the race of people with this color of skin that we named some of our most prominent organizations with that name, the United Negro Improvement Association. The, uh, 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 what is it? The uh, NAACP. The yeah. Nick. What? What? I don't even know what that means anymore. What does that mean? Somebody. Somebody know it. What is well, the NAACP? Other people. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. that uh, that's that, colored. Uh, oh, oh colored. Like that's what it was. Colored people. Uh, the United Negro uh, uh, College folks. You know, you'll find we called ourselves. You listen to old Malcolm X speeches, and he'll use Negro and the to Negro to League. Africa. And the Negro League, when he until he went to Africa and he would check my brother in Africa, he said, We don't like to call our people Negroes. You'll look at old Martin Luther King's speeches and you'll see Martin Luther King, and they, they weren't trying to be disrespectful. They would just been socialized to seeing us as Negroes. And but then when the concept and the ideology of black power hit the scene, the, the conscious black uh, uh the conscious Negroes chose the term black to represent a people who had a level of political consciousness. Black didn't refer to all Negroes or niggers or people of color, whoever, whatever you want to call it. It referred to the ones who was consciously black. Just like Chicano don't refer to all Mexicans. Chicano was a term that was chosen by those Me Mexican people who had became politically conscious. So black started to represent those who were politically conscious, those who were with the Afros and that was throwing the fists. That's what black originally represented. And now it has become the buzzword of phrase that we have called ourselves. Cause we went to like Dr. Khalid loved to express that we don't know who the hell we are. Some say we're Negroes. Some say I ain't no Negro, I'm Afro-American. Some say I'm African-American. Some say I'm black. Some say I ain't none of that. I'm just an African. That's how I really come. Some say F the hell with all of it. I'm just a nigga. You know, mm. we don't we don't know who and what we are, scrambling around trying to find you. Then you have those who say that we're the black Hebrews, that we're the Ethiopians, that we're Balaulians, you know, trying to find an identity, trying Never to scrape up a culture, you know. So we have used that term. And black didn't refer to skin color. It, ref it referred to a, a black represented a, a high a high elevation of, of, of consciousness itself. Even when we go all the way back to the mother mother continent, we commit. Kim being the root word, black chemistry and things like alchemy. We find yeah. these words and these terms being used to talk about the sciences that came from the original man that 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 the European did not completely comprehend and understand. Now, you're right that a lot of the words that we use to de define ourselves did come from our enemies. Like even Africa came from my enemy, enemies. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, one of the oldest terms was a Phoenician term, Afrique, which means sunny. Or uh, Ethiopia came from Greece, which meant land of the burnt faces. When they saw mm -hmm. it, they called it Ethiops, which was, which is a Greek word, which, mean, which literally means burnt. 
So we'll find these words and these terms that we call ourselves, and a lot of these terms, most of these terms, if not all of these terms, are even foreign to us, even when we think that these terms are indigenous to us. That's true. And, and, and okay, I don't think any of that contradicts anything that I said, especially when we, as you said, it has become a buzzword. So where we are at today, all of that consciousness and what it meant and all of that is irrelevant today. Black is, oh, you got brown skin, so you black. That's it. That's what it is. And you can't deny that. It has nothing to do with consciousness because every nigga on the street, you can say, what up, black? And they'll be, what up? It has nothing to do with anything that you said, nothing to do with anything of the consciousness. So my point is, so it's still, it reaffirms what I was saying in terms of, of both consciousness and awareness of culture, and, as well as the contextual uh, necessity, recognizing the cultural or the, the the context in which that word is used. When we use it now, it is used as a superficial recognition. If y'all would read the shit I gave y'all, that book, uh, uh, Black Student's Guide to a Positive Education, Zach Condos talks about the first level of recognition, recognition in this country of our people. And one of the reasons Black nationalism was the first uh, 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 in the, 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 uh, the four isms is because we can identify visually, easy. I ain't got to think about it. I ain't got to put nothing behind it. You black, we saying, that's it. That's all I have to comprehend. So black in this society, in this culture right now is a topical surface that has been thrust upon us just because English of which black is, that word is an English language, it's part of the English language, is not our language. So it was thrust upon us as well as the contextual, we tried to spin it, but it ain't work. They took that shit right away like they've done everything else that we tried to put out there. And I'm going to touch on that later on. But my point is contextually and commit when, yes, I'm froze up. Hello. Okay. We see you. So we, 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 in, 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 in commit. Yes. When we refer to black again, referencing the cultural uh, uh, context, we were not talking about, oh, you're black. No, we don't, we're not identifying the color uh, uh, or saying that your skin is black. We're saying that I can see that by the tone in your in your face, in the skin that, that you walk around with, that, that, that you are connected to the earth. You are human is what we would say, because I'm acknowledging that I can see the earth in you. You are of this earth. Think about it for a second. Everybody do an activity for me real quick. 15 seconds. I want you, I'm, I, I'm gonna yell out a buzzword at the end of this 15 seconds. And that's when I want you to open your eyes. But for 15 seconds, I want you to close your eyes for me. Play a lot. Now I'll see you trying to, you trying to, you trying to cheat. You trying to cheat, cheat, psych. Close your eyes. 15 seconds. Wait a minute. Let me pull up this timer right quick so I get it absolutely uh, uh, true and correct. So nobody be checking me on my uh, uh, time of the day or no shit like that. Um, so for 15 seconds, I want you to imagine everybody that you see is black. Everybody you've ever known is black. And I mean brown, what we would say black today. All right, so 15 seconds, go. So for 15 seconds, everybody you knew, everybody you've ever seen, every school teacher, every uh, policeman, every attorney, every, doc every doctor, everybody on the news, everybody in music, your favorite musician, your favorite artist, your favorite actor, everybody you know and have ever seen is black. Black, 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 everywhere you look. Average folk in the grocery store, black. Somebody walking down the street, black. They black, all of their skin is brown. Uh, you can see the hue, the humus in their skin, black. Blackness is what they are. White. That I mean, that's the, that's the word to wake up. So basically right. what I'm trying to illustrate is that for all of this time that we were walking around the continent and we saw these people that we identified with being of this earth, why? Because we can see the black, i.e. the brown coming from the earth, the humus in our skin. That's what we were referencing. Not our skin tone, but I could see the earth in you. You were of this earth. And then all of a sudden we see somebody white. Just one day walking along, everybody you've ever known in your life looks like psych, looks like war, or rich, looks like us. And then all of a sudden you see somebody that you cannot identify as having come from this earth. Imagine the shock. A, a value that that carries. So this this was the mindset that we were dealing with at one point in time, and we have to keep that that that, that cultural context in, in, in mind when we talk about this. Um, so again, just defining that part of the idea of black culture, defining black, who are we really talking about, and is this a conscious or subconscious effort? 
are we conscious participants in the culture or are we unconscious uh, 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 participants? Are we making a conscious contribution or are we going along with it? Is the, if in, in my definition of culture, the one that I use in my mind in part, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but the idea is that it's a people's way of life is what culture is that transmits the value, their value system from generation to generation. And within that definition, because it's short, I'm gonna read one more time, a people's way of life that transmits their value system from generation to generation. So the question becomes is, who is there? Whose value system is being transmitted? Are the values that we transmit today, whether it's in hip hop, whether it's in, you know, whatever, aspect of our life, music, uh, movies, the clothes we wear, all of that. Are these our value systems that we're transmitting to one another and to the next generation? If it's yes, then we are say, accepting the, cult, the values of a culture that by definition allows others to exist only as it pleases that in control culture, which makes black culture a subculture. It only exists as the dominant culture allows it to exist. That's if we accept that these values are ours. Black culture only exists to the extent that white culture allows it. If these are not our values, if the misogyny, if the, the, the shooting each other up, if the disrespect for family and for, for history and all of these things, not giving a fuck, the individualism, the capitalism, if all of these things are not our values, then we're expressing when we do these things, a foreign alien culture, an alien system of values. We're parroting. We are putting a black spin on somebody else's value system. We're essentially practicing cultural blackface. You understand what I'm saying? If these are our values, if these are truly our values, then cool, we can wrap the show up. Yes, black culture is a is, uh, 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 a uh, humpback humpback or whatever it is, hoochie mama and chicks popping it and baddies in the South and all the rest of this bullshit and you know, baby mamas and fuck you nigga and all of that shit. Those are our values, cool. That's black culture. If those are not our values, if we existed for thousands upon thousands of years based on those values, then cool, you win, I'm out. But if those are not our values, then we're taking somebody else's values and making them acceptable to us. And I think that blackface, you know, mammy and all of that and putting the black on, generationally back then, brothers and sisters who sat through that shit, it was insulting for one reason. For this generation, it's a knee-jerk reaction, but we don't really understand why. And I would posit, I think the why is that we know that culturally, that our values, we're putting blackface on those and so when somebody like Justin Trudeau puts on blackface, he's reminding us, you got our values. You are niggas and you put blackface on it so the rest of your niggas will accept it. And it's a reminder of that. It's like the Cleveland show. If y'all have ever seen the Cleveland show, it was a spin off from Family Guy. I heard somebody, it fucked my head up for a minute because I, I, you know, it's for what it is, I liked it. You know, yeah, it's fucked up all the rest of it, but whatever, it was funny ha ha from time to time but they described it as the family guy in blackface. And that's really all we're doing. When we talk about hip hop, we don't control hip hop. We can't even define what hip hop is. We don't know what hip hop is uh, uh, generationally. We don't understand hip hop's relationship to the Harlem Renaissance. We don't understand it as a refusal to be co-opted. Why? Because it's been co-opted. When you got hip hop, being on a fucking dance with the stars and you got you know uh, uh uh your presidents and and these crackers that don't give a shit about you sitting up quoting your stars and doing all of this other nonsense they're feeding it back to you hip-hop is dead yeah we can say it's still there because we got the black face on it but those are not our values those are not it's not our culture none of that shit has anything to do with who we are we're just parroting and pretending because somebody paid us to do this shit so we'll we'll basically hip hop. We'll go out and do whatever the fuck hey, we're told to do. Whoever is the highest bidder, whoever gives us the most money, gives us the most fame in prime time. We don't do this shit for the money. I mean, for the for the culture. We don't do this shit for 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 the love of it. We do it because we want to check. 
Matter of fact, it's this dude named Razkaz. I got respect for him because he sat up, and I know y'all remember back in the day, I used to love Razkaz. Razkaz came out and kept it honest, kept it real, kept it true. He was one of the greatest underground cats ever from out on the West Coast. And he said, look, I get a record deal, I'm selling out, period. Because you can't have it both ways. So yeah, it's mad, great uh, 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 rappers, MCs, and all of that underground. And that's where the culture remains and where the culture has to stay. Why? Because when it puts its head up, it only exists to the extent that white folk let it. So it can't even be our culture, no matter way you, how you look at it. We're not in control of it. We participate and we do what we're told. Because as soon as we step out of line, that sister back in the day, uh, 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 Femi, Femi, uh, War, you remember the chick's name for the Dallas Police Department. Uh, uh, she was part of the police department start growing locks. They were like, you can't wear locks and be a part of the police department. So as soon as she had a cultural expression, and again, hair, music, clothes, those are expressions of the culture. They're not the culture, they're expressions of the culture. They're saying to everybody, this is how we get down. It's like, I can take a uh, uh, rap music, I, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Three Six Mob, the, 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 the multi-rhythmic shit, the, 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 the several different rhythms we got going on in one song, that's how we do life. Rarely, you know, you, you get uh, uh, black kids that can sit and listen to a rap song playing in the background, doing the words and everything. Meanwhile, he's doing his algebra because we we do that. We, we multitask. That's who we are. That's what we do. We tell stories with with our, our clothes and the, the, you know, our, our hairstyles and all of those things. And so when we wear braids and there are secret codes put in there so that uh, the other so-called slaves along the trail can, can read that shit and can figure out, oh, we need to go that way in order to get free. Or we have kente cloth. We think kente cloth is all of these different designs from Africa. It's not. It's one particular group of people and their cloth. But if you go to uh, most any other group of Africans, we all have that same idea. We weave our story. That kente clock is telling you a story about the people that's in the actual clothing. That's how we do. Now we'll wear Nike or we'll wear Converse or we'll wear whatever. That's not telling no kind of fucking story. So that's not our culture because that's not how we get it down. Matter of fact, it's like we used to back in the day, we refused to wear somebody's fucking, uh, what do you call that? Uh, jersey. I'm not putting some other nigga name on my back. Fuck that. That's, that's some weak shit. Refuse yeah. to do that. Why? Because for African people, what you wear is telling the world who you are. Yep. Sisters, when they go to church, especially when we go to church, wear them big ass hats. They got their hair whooped up, da 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 da. It's not just because we want to look good, it's because it's sending a signal. It's because it's telling the world this is who we are, this is where we come from. We don't lock our hair just because it looks cute, just because fucked up in the head little Wayne got his hair locked. We wear locks because locking locks in a certain mental and emotional state, but we don't know that anymore. So we walk around just locking our hair because it looks good. Hey, right, but hold shit. on, hold on. But you keep going. But you keep going. No, how <laughs> are you going to stop me from doing what I'm doing? You fucking up. God damn. Go ahead, go ahead. I wanted them to break the locks down since he said it ain't because a lot of people doing it because of Lil Wayne. I wanted them to break the locks down, break the signs down. Well, I mean, war can go more deeply into it than I can, but I'm, because, you know, I could never lock my hair because I got white people hair. But yeah, the, locking the hair, they're called locks for that reason because it locks in and it, it, there was a, there were ceremonies. There were uh, 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 rites of passages and things that, that we would go through to be able to wear the lock. It's just like doing uh, um, um, smoking weed or, or whatever. We didn't just smoke weed recreational just to get high. We put ourselves in a certain mindset to sit down, to think about something, to affect where it is we're going. We don't do that anymore because that, we're not in that culture. We're not in our culture. We're practicing somebody else's culture where if you do it, hey, live your best life. Do what makes you feel good. Want, want, want. That's not us. That's not how we get down. So we can say this is black culture because it's got a black face. We can say it's black culture because she got a big ass. We can say it's black culture, but is it really? Is it really? Is this really drawn? Is this drawn from black as a result of niggerdom, slavery? Then yeah, it's black culture. We're we're giving it, we're we're making the best with the bullshit that we've been uh, allowed to have. But if we need to be, if y'all want to talk about Africa, then you need to kick all that shit to the side because none of that shit applies. 
because we were here before all of that happened and we defined what culture was and what culture is. And though we have vestiges that peek through that most of us don't even realize when we point out a little liquor and whatnot, yeah, that's for the homies, wah, wah. That's cool, but what does it really mean? What, do you understand why you're doing that? Do you understand what it is you're building on? Do you understand the power that if you do that with a conscious intent that you will actually be willing? And that's the huge difference. That's the main reason for me why this, we do not have a culture because we are not in control of shit. How the fuck can you have a culture and define and decide anything when number one, like you said, we can't define, decide who we are. So how can there be black culture? No, that's African-American culture. No, that's Negro culture. No, that's Afro culture. Well, nigga, what the fuck? So, so we can't even, we can't, we can't have uh, a culture if we can't even define who it is we are. So we got to go back to square one, you know, and start singing Mammy and understand why that shit hurts and why it hurts today. So yes, I mean, I love hip hop. Hip hop is dead. Our refusal to be, to our refusal to sell out has been bought and sold. That's where it is. And I think that we have to accept and recognize that shit. I love the music. I love our culture. But if I can go down and buy some shit in a mainstream mall, that's supposed to be, if I can buy fucking kente cloth and shit at the fucking mall, you got Nancy Pelosi putting on kente cloth and kneeling down. What the fuck? Your culture is dead in this country. Dead. And there's no denying that. They've taken the shit and they sell it back to us. The fuck? It's not the kente cloth. It's how did the kente cloth get here? It's not the fly gear you got. It's how did the gear get here? That's the culture. How did it get here? Did we do like Jay-Z and sell everybody a fucked up bill of sale and say, hey, buy onto this, you know, this black owned music thing. We gonna take over the world and we gonna have this and we black and black, 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 black. Record labels are fucking everybody up, y'all. Black, 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 black. And then turn around and sell that shit. Once he got big money, turn around and sold that shit to a white fucking corporation. Nigga, please, that's game. But we don't want to recognize it because <laughs> black culture, you know, we want to support him. Fuck that shit, fuck it. So if our shit can be bought and sold like that, we are not in control of it. We are not telling our story. And that is what culture is supposed to do. It's supposed to tell our story to our children, to the next generation, so that they'll know who the fuck we are. But our shit don't. Nike, matter of fact, what's his name? Netflix. They, I sent y'all the link. They are wired up because Cleopatra got a black face. Do, 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 do. Nobody wants to talk about Michael Jackson, who was the uh, arguably the whitest black man that ever existed. But how this dude, if you go back and you watch the video, remember the time, is the only, it may, it may have been more since that I'm not aware of, but at the time was the only, the first true representation of African people in Kemet, in Egypt, that had ever been on the big screen, that had ever been a Hollywood production. This, this fucked up in the head white black boy had all black people playing all of the roles for, for all of these African characters. And now we're upset because, or, or them Arabs are upset because Cleopatra is being portrayed as somebody black. Fuck Cleopatra, she ain't do shit. I'll take her. She was part of the Macedonian, she was Greek, she's probably white, I don't give a shit. Let's talk about Queen T. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about the, 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 the Kandasis. Let's talk about Nzinga. Let's talk about some sisters who actually did some fucking thing for our people. Let's talk about the fact that when they talk about Egypt, the motherfuckers that are running Egypt right now are not the children of the people who built the pyramids. Those people that are running Egypt are the children, the bastard children of the Arab invaders. White folks came in, mixed with black folks. Their children said, fuck that black shit. White people got it going on. I'm rolling with them. Boom, you got Arabs. And they took over and destroyed the noses of the, the harem I kept, the, the Sphinx. They're the ones that tore the limestone off the side. You used to could walk across uh, uh, from miles and hundreds of miles away, look over and see this shining like it's a fucking star on the ground. That was a pyramid because the pyramids were covered in limestone. So when the light hit them, they would shine like a goddamn star. You're talking about the biggest star in existence? These were the biggest stars on earth. And we built that shit. But these motherfuckers that run it now, talk about Oh, Afrocentrism is a pseudoscience. Fuck you. Egyptology is a pseudoscience because it ignores and it continues. And what they're continuing to, to do is to keep Egypt over here and Africa over there. So it's yeah. irrelevant whether or not Queen, uh, uh, Cleopatra was white or black. Nefertiti wasn't an African. 
Who gives a shit? Neither one of them did a goddamn thing. Look at the culture that built the fucking pyramids. Whose culture was that? All of them noses that got blown off can't be wrong. Napoleon blew some shit up on purpose. Them Arabs destroyed our shit for a reason. And that's what's more significant. But this culture has us concerned, just like about Trump. Everybody gets wired up about Trump. Oh, they're wired up about Netflix special and Cleopatra. Don't know shit about Africa because the culture that we exist in won't allow it. If this was our culture, we'd have already made a fucking uh, uh, videos and movies and shit about the people that were significant in Africa. And that would be our culture. But this shit here we got going on, nigga, we just playing. We, we just fucking playing. We getting paid. As long as we get paid, we'll do it. You pay me enough money, I will make you some kente cloth. You pay me enough money, I will say black power. You pay me enough money, I'll do what you say. That's our culture. That's what it is. Because as soon as they say that uh, kente cloth ain't, ain't, ain't worth shit anymore, now we down with cat shit. That's what we want. Every nigga that you see out here is going to stop rapping about, you know, whatever. They're going to start rapping about cat shit because that's our culture. <laughs> we niggas. We slaves, we do what they tell us. And as long as we in that mindset, that's what our culture is. And you, you, I don't see how you can divide, de, 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 deny that logically. It's so, not so, You said, so we do have a culture. We have a slave, we, 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 we practice, we are participants in a culture, a subculture, one that is controlled, operated and owned by somebody else. But do we have it? It's like that necklace around your neck. You don't, you only have that necklace till I take it from you. So you yeah. don't really have it. So this culture that we're playing in and fronting and pretending and whatnot, we can say it's ours, but the ones that are in control, they know. As soon as they say, get that shit back, nigga, we gonna give it back. And that's what it is. No doubt, so. That's well, the alley, the alley -oop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, we the, we the producers of culture. You know say Whether it's a culture that we, we in control of or, we, or somebody else control, we, you have, they have to have a, they have to have a, a a source to pull this from. You know what I'm saying? If we weren't producing a culture, they wouldn't have no. They wouldn't have nothing to exploit. So we have to have a culture for them to exploit the culture anyway. So we cult had cultures. We had our own culture. They built on it, taken it, sold it back to us, and then we, like War said, we spit it back up to each other and other people. But we're not producing it. We don't produce shit. We don't produce tennis shoes. We don't produce hats. We don't produce buildings. We don't produce anything. Well, we we produce the bodies. We produce. We pro ultimately we produce. We produce My the body. You are one hundred percent right. Yeah. We do produce the slave labor for the system. You're absolutely right. So you know, ultimately, it wouldn't be a shoe on the planet Earth if it wasn't for black culture. It wouldn't be a stitch in a shirt. It wouldn't be a fiber to to thread a sock up with if it wasn't for black culture. You know, these things, uh, essentially, I, I can't, there's no way I can remove myself from the idea that black culture is essentially, uh, in essence, ultimately, the only culture that exists, whether it's being exported, whether it's being sold, whether it's being produced, whether it's being uh, uh, mocked or whatever. The only culture that exists is the culture that it originated from, like that that root culture. Everything is like, okay, everything is, even, even, the, tree, even the fruit gonna fall off the tree, fall back to the ground and it's gonna return to the root. It's gonna return to the essence. So ultimately, Everything that, that that's being produced that you talk about right now, it, it, they wouldn't have a chance to export it if it didn't exist, if we didn't have it. And even if we could regurgitate and get it back, they're going to produce a culture from it. You see, look at what we do. Is, is, we, is, is pedophilia a part of black culture? Man, I'm talking, what? The, is pedophilia well, a part of black culture? But the, the negative aspect of it? Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? Any of it. You know what I'm saying? But the, 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 the love of a child, not from a European perspective, we love children. The children are the greatest. The babies are the greatest. You know what so saying? then that comes from a different culture, but right? That's not black culture. The idea of, you know what I'm saying, but the people that were produced, you know what I'm saying, the humans that were produced, they all come from a black germ. Well, you know, whether they, they get right. bleached out, and you can take something perverted, you know what I'm saying? That culture right there, it's 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 a culture perverted. It's a culture right. of perverted, you know what I mean? But essentially, Absolutely. it came from, essentially it came from a people who genuinely, sincerely love children, to a people who pervertedly love children. You know what I'm saying? Because they seem like, wow, they have a high reverence for children, children education. That's pedophilia, you know, in in, in the, the love of a child, but it's not that sick, perverted, uh, Greco-Roman, European, westernized pedophilia. So essentially, black people produce the culture of loving children, you know what I'm saying? Of loving women. Now, when somebody takes your culture, like they're doing right now, they, they take the science of, of bending metals 
to 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 build guns and bombs and all the same shit that we taught them. You took something. You took life that we produced and turned it into death. And we'll take you. We'll take your death and reproduce it and turn it into life again. We'll give your death a life, like we giving they they we giving the, the the death that they giving us. We're giving it a life. You can hand us anything, and we're gonna turn it into a culture and reproduce it. And you gonna take it, and you gonna do whatever you gonna want, or uh, whatever you want to do with it. But essentially, all culture, there wouldn't be a culture if it wasn't original culture. So you know, I definitely don't agree with you know the perversion of culture. But essentially, you could you don't have a you don't have a place to pull it from if you don't have us as the originators of a culture in the first place. So you know, I mean, let like, me jump in real quick and go back to. Uh, what what uh, Psych had me to talk about, which was the 3D. And the reason why this is important is this helps to give us a foundation to be able to expand upon as it applies to principles to where you don't necessarily have to learn all of the intricate aspects. But in saying that, we talk about the 3Ds and then we have what we call the three Ps. The three Ps are perceive, pursue, and preserve. Now, let me, let me break it down, the, the, the order of sequence, so that we can see where we are now, based on what he was talking about. In order to define properly, you have to be able to perceive. If you can't perceive what it means to be in power, if you can't perceive what it means to be self-determined, then when you define something, it's going to end up with that perversion that, that, that y'all are talking about. So therefore, if, I, if I'm if i going to turn around and regurgitate something that has been perverted, <laughs> it's because my perception is me not knowing the essence of where it really came from and 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 trying and, and, and learning to do best with what I got, which is slave food or what we call chitlins, which some people call soul food. Why is it soul food? Because they have taken that perversion and they've tried to cre create and, 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 and inspire or empower themselves with that perversion. But that in just because you take a perversion and you try to regenerate life out of it, that is going to, in essence, be uplifting a, a debt, a life of debt. So we got to understand how the two connects. That is uplifting a life of debt. So that goes into pre, uh, proceed because we can't proceed properly. We're not going to have the proper definition. Therefore, if we don't have, if, if whatever definition we do have, now we're going to do what we call develop. So we're going to develop from that perversion definition that we got. And based on that, we will pursue a position, a, a particular position. And if we're pursuing something based on perversion, based on uh, a dysfunctionality, like Psych said earlier, then you're going to be in a position where ultimately you're going to be defending that, which is why we, when we talk about the slave mentality, that's where you get the slave that will, that will, will defend and put hit and put, his uh the slave master's life before their own that's where that mentality comes from that's based upon that and so from that standpoint once you are defending that now you are preserving that destroyed wrong e e erotic culture a way of life so to speak so you have to recognize how the three p's and the three d's all intertwine and come together and we refer to those three sections of threes as you as you apply those two as what we call the trifactor. And so it's about recognizing the patterns of life and recognizing the patterns of sequence so that we don't get caught up. And you can apply that to every area of your life, the three Ds and the three Ps. And if you and if you apply it properly, you'll be able to see through a lot of a, a lot of the uh, a trick knowledge that's going on, uh, Comrade Rich. And that's no. kind of what we're getting at. So E, both of y'all are, are, are right. It's just you're telling a story from a different side. So we have to recognize what, what, what we're dealing with. And I think that just really goes into, again, being able to perceive what you def what you are gonna then define. And if you're operating through somebody else's definition, that's because your perception has been warped or your perception has been limited. And therefore, when you develop something from a, a definition that has been given to you from somebody else, Meaning you wasn't able to perceive it through your own your own intellect or your own ability or your own roots. Now what you're going to end up doing again is pursuing and defending something that ain't your own, or defending something that in essence is going to be you uplifting or bringing life to death. And so I just think that's important that our people know that. Well, I want to I want to I want to add to this conversation a little bit. 
I want to add a little care. bit. Huh? Don't nobody care. I'm going <laughs> to add to I'm going to add to this. Now, now, okay, e, you gave us a definition earlier because you said that the one I gave was lacking. Actually, both definitions was great because I gave a foundational definition of what culture is, and in your definition, you gave the definition of what culture is supposed to do. And, 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 and I would like you to read the definition that you gave one more time, if you don't mind. Because I want to I want to build on something. E. Culture is people's way of life that transmits their value system from generation to generation. That's what culture is supposed to do for people. Now, the way of life aspect is the definition that I gave, what a culture is. And that way of life comes into being based on people having to have proximity to each other. They have to be in the same place, going through the same thing or similar things. They have to have things in common. And, it, and based on that commonality, these people start practices with one another. Religions, morals, uh, 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 belief systems, stories. I'm pretty sure everybody here, and this is just a, an example, just a basic example to make a point. I'm pretty sure everybody here as a kid that heard a story of Bloody Mary and stood in a mirror and thought somebody was going to come out the mirror at one time or another, right or wrong. Yeah. Right? Right, right. Yeah. right? Everybody here to play hang go seek, right? Yeah. All right. I'm just, you know, these, these are, these are, and here we are. We, well, you other two guys come from where I come from, but we are different parts of the country, and you'll be hard pressed to find someone who has not participated in these activities because right. these are a part of the culture. Now, as Walt was explaining earlier, that culture, because I'm going to get back to a point in a minute, but cultures also have subcultures. Any sociology textbook will tell you that. In, in the black culture, we have subculture. Crippin' Blood is a subculture. Folk Nation, uh, People's Nation is a subculture. They have their own languages, their own rituals, their own their own subculture, so to speak. But but see, here is the thing, and this is what I want to pro- this is what I want to say, is that why why it goes back to what I said earlier. Why this is not our indigenous culture, and therefore it is not completely doing what a culture needs to do for a people. It is a culture. And this is what I, this is what I truly believe. Literally, hear me out. This is what I truly believe. And here's, the, and here's the thing, because we don't like it, we don't want to give it the definition of a culture because it's a dysfunctional culture that has been poisoned on us. Poisoned on us. It's like, it's like, uh, it's like uh, me sitting down to a plate of food. And, you know, for years, for years, for the first 15 years of my life, I sat down to a plate of food that was prepared by somebody who loved me so that I could eat and become stronger. I still sit down to a plate of food, but somebody has slowly been injecting the food that I've been eating with poison. And now the food that I'm eating is killing me. It doesn't take away from the fact that it is a plate of food, but it does require me to recognize that something else has been injected into the food. And so therefore the food is not doing what the food is supposed to do to me. And that is not too far from the truth because what we are defining as food today is poison and it's killing us. And we're still calling it food. We're still going to, we're still pulling up. Yeah, we're still pulling up to the, uh, to the, to the average food place and buying our sad diet from the average food place. And we're still calling it food. And what that's where I'm going at with culture. What I'm saying is that there is no way that culture cannot exist when people have proximity to each other because they will de- develop a way of life that is common, which automatically produces culture. I believe truly that our enemy recognized that. I think that our enemy wanted to completely destroy culture because the enemy understood that that is what created unity uh, 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 and commonality amongst the people. And then recognize what I'm saying now is that culture actually cannot be destroyed as long as you have people in proximity to each other going through a common experience. As long as you have that, culture will come up. So the next best thing is to pause the what? That's an ab culture. It's still a culture. You just call it an ab culture. It's, it's a culture, but because we don't like it, we don't want to call it what it is. Culture does not define, does not have, it's a good thing. 
in in the definition as we keep trying to do that we keep trying to force it to have be that it has to be good to be called culture no it, it just has to be a common experience a common way of life that's all it has to be to be culture and we don't okay. want to accept it as culture it's just like we being you had the debate a while back we would have the debate about emotions and I was said to using examples of our emotions lead the He kept saying, no, that's dysfunctional emotion. That's dysfunctional emotion. You know, we, emotion. we don't we don't want to accept it as being emotion if it's dysfunctional. It's emotion, but it's dysfunctional emotion. It's culture, but it's dysfunctional culture. It's still culture. Just like the crimson blood is a subculture, it's still culture, whether or not we like it or not. And and we'll we can go into history for thousands and thousands of years and find us having similar practices. Only difference is our practices have been co-opted and corrupted and they're not destroying us. We're, we're a group, we've always had youth groups that, that, that moved in militant manners. We always had that. Now our youth group that moved in militant manners are still in the drive-bys on our own houses. That what we had had been taken and turned against us. And Sun Tzu said that the wise general destroys his enemy while he's in his mother's womb. Yeah. And you gotta ask yourself, how does he do that? He does that by perverting his culture and train him to eliminate himself. Go ahead, brother. So first, <clears throat> it's not so much that they've dis 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 corrupted our practices. That's one thing. That's what they did when we got here. The issue is that they they've, dis they've corrupted our values. They've corrupted not just the practices. Again, the practices are an expression. They corrupted what's behind the expression. The values. That goes into it. The values are corrupted. And so can it really be called our own? Number one. Number the two. The values are, are corrupted. I, then we automatically, systematically corrupt the own practices because there is no way to practice properly with corrupt values. Concur. And if you go That's in the and if you use the, the 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 practices skillfully as they have to turn around and corrupt the values, that's where it becomes an absolute. Because they corrupted our our practices a long time before we got here. It wasn't until we got here that they corrupted our values to where our values allow things that are going on in our community to be accepted as the norm. And I'm not saying that it's not a culture. I'm saying it's not our culture. It is not black culture. It is not African culture. It has nothing to do with us other than the expression, other than the corrupt practices. We do things the way we do things because it's essentially us. We cannot make music that is not funky. We cannot make music. They talk about, um, there was a saying when I was a kid, folks would talk about uh, soul music and all of that. And the saying was that if you have to ask what soul is, that means you ain't got it. Because that's just a part, an innate part of what it is we are, how we do shit. Whatever we do, we get into country music. We fuck that shit up. We got into basketball, used to be all white. We funk that shit up because that's who we are. So they took those practices and they used them to corrupt the values. And so now the values have been corrupted to the point that they're not our values. We don't own the expression, let alone the values. So is it black culture? Or is it us putting a black face on somebody else's values? Is it taking our now corrupted practices and fucked up values that are actually not our values? They're their values. They're not even, you can't even say corrupt. They're completely gone. We don't do shit like they do shit when we were doing what we do. So I can't see that there's anything left for us to say what we have going on right now is black culture. There's nothing black about it, not the values, not the way we treat women, not the way we treat women. Black, the fact that we have to have YouTube talking about this is a woman's role. This is what a man is. This is what a woman is. And we participate in that bullshit and think it's cool shows us that our value, these are not our values. So that's not black. You got motherfucking rappers on Saturday Night Live fucking wearing dresses and motherfuckers back him up. You got black comedians over the years wearing, and, and other actors wearing dresses. And it's copacetic. Those are not our fucking values. So can I say that that black music, it's not black music because we're not talking about the black experience. We're talking about fucking and getting money. That's that they do. 
That's their shit. That's what they've done this whole time is fuck your grandmama. George Washington fucked little underage black girls, period. That's their culture. But we put a black face on it and say, that nigga is dope. Because we like the way that it looks. That's not our culture. That's not our expression. It's corrupted and fucked up. You know, we can't help, again, we can't help the expression because that's just how we do shit. That's just how we do it. We can't get away from that. We make it look so cool. But the values it. involved are not ours. So we can't say it's black culture. It's not black. It's so white culture with a black face. It's so black here's face. The, Manny. Here's the, here's the bad thing right here is that you're kind of convincing me. And since you're convincing me, hold on, hold on, here we go. Whoa! Here we go. Since he's convincing me, here's the problem. The purpose of culture is to transmit our way of life from generation to generation. If we don't know, no longer have any culture, then we no longer have that transportation, that model that's supposed to transmit our way of life from gen. So it doesn't exist. It's completely wiped out. And so if I that's know, true, you know what's cold what? about that real quick? Well, you know what's, what's cold? Up? the Black Panther Party membership manual, we call that generational, foundational generational advancement. We are, we already got that in there. Go ahead. I just wanted to throw that out there. This motherfucker. What, what is wrong with him with the mugglad glass? But, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> there's some hell of a glass, boy. One person I've known that has some hell of a glass at that damn same age. But, uh, if, if this is true, then what do we do about it? What do we do with it? You know, if if, if we don't have a culture, we don't put blackface on their culture. We're operating under this 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 pseudo culture, this 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 bullshit lens. Everything about it is 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 poisoning us and killing us from within. Everything about it. You know, there are certain parts of it that I hate more than others. There are certain parts of it that he hates more than others. There are certain parts of it that Rich, I know Rich can't stand more than others. That Rich used to bitch and complain about consistently. So, so there are certain parts of it, you know, I hate the baby mom, baby daddy thing. That's, 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 you talk about uh, our need to get on a YouTube channel and talk about the roles of man and woman where the, where the fact, the fact is there is a need for it because the average male and female, black male and female in America don't know those roles. And matter of fact, it's been so perverted now that the men desire to play the women's role. Men want to be at home. Men want to be at home, live around the house, make 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 the home sleep all day, things of that nature, and let the woman go out and get the money. Let the woman take care of them. The women want to take on the men roles. We, we have a twisted up culture. So this is why we talk about those, that's why we have these conversations, trying to put it out there. But what do we do if the culture doesn't exist, if the culture is dead? If the culture see, is dead, what do we do? That's what I'm saying. See, see, that goes back to what I'm saying, because I had to train myself to see the better part of a culture that I thought was dead. The culture that I read about in books when I started uh, graduating my consciousness, I had to say, hold on, hold on, what? Hold on, what, what, I'm, what I'm doing in the penitentiary? Why Why are so many motherfuckers here who look like me? Why so, Why we got so much of the same story? I had to really train myself in the in the, in the recent years to start training myself to see the, the the black culture I was talking about, the the mathematics, the uh, the stars. You know what I'm saying? The 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 fractals in nature. You know what I mean? These things that people uh, have uh, expressed through kente cloths, through dreadlocks. I had to start saying, "Oh, okay." Was, now you might have them dreads in your head because you just some funny, phony rap style nigga, but there's a science to that. And my ancestors are constantly speaking to me through these through these mathematics, through this geometry, through this expression. My ancestors are constantly saying, "Rich, there wouldn't be a foundation." If it wasn't mathematics, there wouldn't be wood that was taken from a tree, laid out and made into a house if it wasn't for mathematics. If it wasn't for somebody who took the time to participate in nature, who let nature to teach them, you know what I mean? So that what, what we do is that we start looking for the as, for our aspect of our culture that expresses us. And we and once you become in tune with it, there's no there's no choice. You have to express it. Like even if even when we sell out, we make slummy look cool. How many motherfuckers you know can take dickies and chucks, the shit they sell in the thrift stores and bend behind some bullshit ass Woolworth and make that into a whole style? Us, we do that. We can. I'm talking. We make we make cooning and all that shit look cool. So many other motherfuckers want to do it. So I really have to train myself to say, hold on, hold the fuck up, Rich. I'm sitting here looking at this whole bullshit ass nigga uh, that want to uh, 
uh, rap his life away and fuck his life away and all this whole bullshit. I say, man, hold on. This, this there's a deeper science to this. And it said, like, like we like we teach, like we know. When the student's ready, the teacher appears. The universe, the master builder, the master teacher is always willing to teach you when you put yourself in that in that role to humble yourself and say, hold on, hold on, pause, hold, hold on. Look at the science of it. Look at the math of it. You know what I mean? Just look at the distance of it. Look at look, look how look at look at the photons. Look at the light. Look at these things. And, and we start saying, "Oh, okay, peace, God. That's peace." You know what I'm saying? I bring myself back to and say, "The the way the way I transmit it is to let let it pour into me and let me reciprocate that energy and I express it like that. I, everything I try to do, I try to do it with uh with a sense of intuition, with a sense of intellect, with a sense of logic and reason that's powered by a positive energy and emotion. Because I'm like, if I sit back and dwell on these motherfuckers, uh, four houses down from me. Man, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be fucked up. I'll be messed up. I sit here looking at these dudes digging in my mama's trash can, breaking into my, my girlfriend's car in front of the house. You know what I'm saying? And, and standing outside, I'll, I'll be messed up. I said, but I'm telling you, to sit back and to look at the the the, the blackness of it. You know what I mean? Every fiber, every strand, every 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 star that's being calculated, the distance between the the, the sunrise and the sunset. Man, I'm I'd be extremely proud because the answer is saying, hey, we don't never die. You know what I'm saying? You can take it, you can, you can take out the whole, you can steal out, you can do whatever you want, but you can't stop the ultimate expression of this blackness that's always is and always will be. So I, I think that, you know, identifying with that part of our culture is the resurrection of the culture that, you know, it's, it starts within you. We can't just put culture in other motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, without having it in us first. So I def I definitely see that and I be I see it all the time. Like I said, squares, circles, stars, triangles, you know what I mean? I just see it everywhere. And I ancestors constantly speak to me, like, yeah. We in there, you know what I'm saying? We ain't dead. We don't die. We multiply. So you know, I, I found I found an extreme amount of uh, pride and confidence when the ancestors speak to me like that. And I'm like, shit. Oh, it ain't over. For real, it ain't over. So that, you know, this the longest. This the long, like Abu uh, Abu Jamal said, this the longest war in history. The war on black people. So this the long. It's the longest war on the planet. So I did. That's you know. Just, that's how I put it. That's how I see it. That's the only way to bring it back, is to live it and see it and express it and reciprocate it. You did. So I think that's how we bring it back. I think I kind of, I kind of, uh, 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 kind of want to stop while I'm ahead. Me and Psych uh, agreed on some shit. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to leave it alone for I'm going to fuck shit order. up. <laughs> it's no order. But it's the same shit that, that you know. In answer to your question, it's the same shit. Sit down and shut the fuck up. I mean, the reality of it is, I hear people all the time say, you know, I'm very humble. But the reality of it is, humility is uh, seldom seen and never heard. So if we're having to tell people that we're humble, that's an, that's not a humble thing to do. No. So what it is we have to do is the very thing we don't want to do. Figure that shit out and, and humble ourselves to that. Give ourselves over to that and stop making it about what it is we want to do. You know, oh what is God. your objective? It, matter of fact, the what is the most referenced tactic, at least I guess at least in my head, that white folk ever used to destroy any people that they've ever come across, particularly us. What well, what's the number one tactic? It should be on the tip of your tongue, Sight. <laughs> what's the number one tactic? The number one tactic that they use. We reference it all the time. You overthinking it. <laughs> Divide and conquer. Okay, you overthink it. Number one thing that they do. And if you look at it and really apply that idea, the culture that exists now is a culture of individuals. And what is a culture of individuals, but a group of individuals that has been divided and therefore conquered. We live in the ultimate divide and conquer uh, uh, reality that has ever existed. So until we get beyond that concept, that idea that we're individuals and get back to our culture, that references that we are all bound to the earth, at least African people, because you know, we see white people, ain't no brown. So I don't, I'm not sure where the fuck y'all are from, but we from the earth and I can prove it, look at my skin. And so till we, and on an individual level, doing what it is we don't want to do and reaching across and making what is good for the whole more important. 
than what is what 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 it is I want to do. No and learning that shit, embracing that shit, letting that shit be a part of your reality. And sit oh, down, yeah. shut the fuck up. Yeah, I think ultimately, um, you know, we 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 read it in science books and in the science itself, how you know space, you know, space or the universe is continually spreading out and it's all moving towards these, you know, these parts where you know maybe a black hole, but they'll black every, everything is moving in the direction of that. And the, the lesson that we draw from that is that you know everything is gonna return to its essence. You know what I mean? And everything's gonna be everything, like everything's divided, everything will be together. You know what I mean? It's just we might not see it in, in this lifetime of our, you know, of our personal self, but essentially. It's happening with or without our permission, without, you know what I'm saying, with the consciously or unconsciously, with our consent or without it. Everything is moving to some point to where it's gonna be that one, that one thing. And that one thing in our sense is gonna be that culture. But you know, Black people was the most culturally diverse, after the most culturally diverse place on the planet. So we ain't just had essentially we had that in essence, we had things that were uh bonding, culture that was bonding things, certain things that without no matter what culture you went to or what 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 land you end up in, we had similar beliefs. But you know, African culture, black culture, it's it's so it's so diverse, it's so multifaceted that hell, we might we heading towards it, we heading to that towards that unity and might not even know it. Exactly what he said. One more point. How do I point down? Exactly what he exactly what he said. How profound that is. Think about what he said. You could go and, and Chancellor Williams said this shit. All African religions, quote unquote religion are essentially the same. All African cultures are essentially the same. Unity, singularity. But our expression of it is what is diverse, the oh, duality. Man. The essence is one, us, we people. How we express it is multifaceted, wherever mm -hmm. we go, because we're connected to it. And that's what we do. And so when we start, but we have to tap into that and understand, number one, what racism, what, uh, what, what's the name, Neely Fuller and, and Dr. Wilson, till we understand racism, white supremacy, what it is and how it acts, everything else that we think we understand is only going to confuse us. And it does. We are the most confused people in the world. No doubt. So let's, let's, well, let's line signs. Well, you've been a pastor for like 80 years and you ain't free black people yet. So in your <laughs> point of view, <laughs> your point of view, you know, I got to crack a little joke every so you often. Get F. <laughs> you get an F. You get an F. 80 euros. <laughs> ain't free nobody. But did shit. I get, I, get, I get an L for functional. How about that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, brother Sight. But the, the, the question, the question that brother Ian, brother Rich just asked, if the, if there is no black culture and culture's job is to transmit our ways of life from generation to generation, then where are we standing? How do we get this culture back? What do we do? I think it goes back to what Rich was saying. I think things will naturally go in that direction. The point is, as, as, as long as you do have African consciousness and consciousness and, and some people that do see past the veil, it's, it's just a matter of time. And then you have to understand, again, just like how Rich called it, calling it what it is. If death is death, then at some point there will be life, period. There is a cycle. It is a natural cycle. Those of us that are, that are here on, on, on this call right now doing our part to push the cycle back where it, it is naturally going to go. And that's all we're talking about, which to me goes back to true culture. So, no. It, it, it is going to come around because it has to come around because the course of the way things are going now on this planet, you got two things that are going to happen. If things continue the way they are, then you're talking about the death of life as, as humanity knows it on the planet, or there's going to be a rebirth, period, point blank. There's, there's no other way. Because oh. imperialism is taking things to the point to where humanity will not be able to exist on this planet. So, it's only one way it can go. So the way I see that is all we all we basically talking about is the cycle, the cycle of life and death. The cold, thing, the cold thing is, like Tony Brother said, it ain't got so horrible because you know there's a small group of our people that keep, you know, our traditional African cultural ideas alive, that study our ancient knowledge, and that still in some level attempt to live out those principles. But 
for the for majority, and it's always been like this since the beginning of time, that the, the masses have been deaf, dumb, blind, and lost. But for the for majority, our people no longer even have a taste for our culture. So it's not even a, a case of them not knowing that our culture exists, but if you present it to them, our people don't have a taste for our culture. They have a, a greater desire to practice the foreigners' culture. E. I think, I think when you get down to it, because I've had a lot of conversation, and you know, I don't talk to a lot of dudes, but a lot of sisters I talk to have a desire for it, have don't have a taste for it because they haven't tasted it, but want to taste it, but don't know how to taste it because we've been taught to rebel against it so so deeply that we can't recognize it when it comes. And when we do recognize it, it's so fucking painful. And that's why I say do what it is you don't want to do. You know, getting back to that shit requires us to turn a corner. We don't want to turn a corner. It's like in the uh, Panther movie back years ago with uh, uh, that guy from The Matrix. They said, uh, um, when they were coming in and interviewing recruits and shit, and was it too young MC said, as long as I can keep my job and keep putting food on the table, I want to be a Panther. You know, as long as I can keep my job in corporate America and keep reaping the benefits of a system that, that exploits us and puts us down and, and holds us out and shit. Yeah, I'm down. And as long as I can keep getting my, my pat on the back from NASA, hell, I'm down with the revolution. We, we, we don't understand that how that shit doesn't work and will never work. And so, yeah, we don't have a taste in large part. And I mean, even us don't want to talk about things that are painful. You, you yeah. don't want to talk about things that are painful. You know, generally speaking, don't want, let alone do things that are painful uh, because we're taught to seek comfort. We're taught to run away from pain and to embrace the things that make us quote unquote happy. You know, when the reality of it is, Embracing that pain is what's going to help you understand what happiness is and letting go of that pleasure. You know, pleasure comes and goes. It's no long, it, 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 it's no no different than, you know, just fucking around. You know, stop fucking around and put that energy someplace else and you're actually able to build and create and do some things. But sex is so wonderful and so great. I want to do it. And so we do it. It's the same with red bottom shoes and Nikes and whatever else it is where we're getting pleasure from. We mistake that shit for happiness, not realizing that the real path to happiness is straight through pain. There's no way around it, but we don't want to deal with that pain because we've had pain for no reason. We've just hurt and don't understand why. We just hurt, 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 hurt. And so when someone comes along and says, hey, let's hurt, but a little bit different. All we hear is hurt. Now, this is this is suffering and this is pain for a goal, for an objective, for something bigger that's going to help you look in the mirror and say, that don't hurt no more. But as long as we think that pleasure is what we want, that pain is still gonna be there. We're gonna keep running away from it. Motherfuckers wanna travel so much because they running from pain, they running from pain, running from pain, and think they done did something. They, they went to Greece or to Rome and stood on the ruin. I know more about Greece and Rome than most of them because all they did was go and deal with the cultural expression, the fluff, rather than digging down and reading and studying the actual, uh, doing the painful things, which is studying and reading and, and all of that to actually know what it is. We just want that surface level, their culture, not ours. We don't do that. We can't not be deep. And we got brushes and, and mirrors and combs and shit with praises to God and how to get to heaven and how to live right engraved on the back. That's some deep shit. Black folk don't know how to be shallow. Even when we be in shallow, we deep. You yeah. know what I mean? So, so yeah, we've got to get beyond this surface level. Oh, that hurt clutching the pearls. Stop cl clutching your fucking pearls and get beyond that shit. Yeah, it hurts. I like that shit. I like making motherfuckers hurt with that shit. <laughs> Cause I know well, that that's what the fuck it is we have to have. If you haven't noticed, I don't hardly apologize for stepping on toes no more because fuck it. I'm just going to step on your toes. You're going to hurt and be mad at me. But the reality of it is, it's a pain that you need to have. Sorry. Yeah. I like that. Like, what? Look like, oh, I thought War was about to say something. <laughs> I, 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 I'm about to say, that's, that's, that's my MOI, goddamn. Listen to him. <laughs> 
Well, we've been getting ready to bring it to a close. It's coming up on eight o'clock. I'm gonna have one more thing and I'm gonna kick it off so we can close it with this. Um, I always do this. Hopefully people will take this sometime. Um, I want two books that can help a person start developing their understanding and comprehension of culture. And I'm gonna start out because most of y'all gonna try to say this and I'm gonna say it and yeah. take it from y'all. I'm gonna take it from y'all. From the Brider file. That's all right. I gave it Brider. That's all right. Take it. I gave it to you, goddammit. Yeah. That's a great <laughs> book to read for a beginner that's that that's starting down that journey. It's a great book to read. And it would be too easy for me to say the next one. So I'm not even going to use it. I'm going to leave it out in the open for somebody else to say. So I'm going to go to a different one. Another one that takes a little bit of deeper reading and a deeper comprehension is When the World Was Black, Volume 1 by Supreme Understanding. Those are two books that I think that a person can read to start down the, the traveling to understand and comprehend what culture is and how we can start to try to get culture back. Water okay. walked off and the full bit on him, so I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it on down to Rich. He, he, he looking for a book. He yeah. look. <laughs> okay, Rich. I love that uh Sheikh Antadiyaf, Civilization of Barbarism. Okay, that was and, cool. um, that, that's a and, a and another book that uh talks about restarting culture. Oh man, um you know my all my I'm sorry, I know every one of my books ever read uh title and author and all. So let me look, let me look behind me right quick. Oh, Let's I see, see American it. flag back there. The fuck? What the fuck is this dude? Oh, what you got on our channel, man? What the fuck is this dude? No, that's no, that, that ain't it. That. That oh, oh. oh. <laughs> he said it's 150 damn stars. Oh, that ain't it. Oh. That ain't it. Oh. He got the he got the wretched, he got the wretched of the earth, the autobiography from Malcolm X, and American flag back there. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting on American. <laughs> Oh, that ain't that. Uh, I like that. That ain't that. That, <laughs> that ain't that. That is this. That ain't that. that no, you know, no, my grandma's. That's on the chair. She <laughs> 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 oh, that is my grandma's. Don't worry about it. She's a kid. Damn. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, my man's. My, I can't. Uh, Naeem Akbar, which I, you know, I got it heard. I got wind that he, he might be a homosexual. You know that's his personal preference, but uh, his breaking the tank psychological slavery uh, is is another one. Or oh, know thyself. You know he used to have the name change. Richard. You know that's, those are some of the books you can reference uh, is uh, culture's concern and how to you know start to develop your own culture, a sense of identity uh, culturally. All right. So, e. What? Two books that no. you get that you can get a masses that they can go. Uh, well, if you can find a copy of it, because they're real hard to find now, <clears throat> and I gave y'all a copy, but y'all ain't read it. Uh, Black Student's Guide to a Positive Education by Zach Kondo. It's about the same size as the Browder file, along the same lines, easy reading, breaks down some like key little shit that anybody can process and, and take with them. It's an introdu introduction into Blackness, like woke Blackness, like you know what you was talking about, Malcolm Blackness. That sort of thing. As far as the second book, I don't know. I honestly don't think y'all gonna make it through the first one, but <laughs> that ain't on me. Um, now Valley contribution to civilization is is dope. No it, doubt. It's yeah. reference for being able to identify our cultural expressions, i.e. things like the, the tech hand or the so-called obelisk, the Washington Monument, the layout of Washington, D.C., the the, the 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 logos for like the CBS, the All Seeing Eye, and the, the Peacock on NBC and different things like that points out a whole lot of those things and can help us start seeing that our ancestors are still to this day speaking to us. So, yeah, I would roll with that one as well. And yeah, despite yeah. the size, it's actually, again, it's by Browder, who did the Browder files. Very easy, easy, easy. I mean, it's like, Lots of pictures. Lots of pictures. My children, when they were like yeah. eight years old, were reading that shit. So it's, it's very yeah. easy. It's easy. It's easy to uh, read, easy to understand, but it also is deep. It's simple, mm -hmm. but it's deep. He okay. made it, he did he did the Tupac with it. You know, he made it. He took he did it simple, but it was just extremely deep. He go into the African origin of masonry and show you how, how Africa influenced. 
the 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 uh the uh horoscope and Greeks and he go into all that in this in this book, which is actually not big enough for all the stuff that he actually details. I don't know how the hell he did it. But it's a, it's a good book. Comprehensive. Yeah. Into the- all right, let me get mine. Uh, and I'm, I got I got to come back to uh, somebody from uh, like Sammy Ace's background from a hip hop perspective, just to give him a taste on something because y'all have already named y'all have already named the foundations. Uh, so I would say the gospel of hip hop by KRS One, and I mm. say that because basically what that one does is give people that are learning the subculture of hip hop and, and the roots of it and learning how to be able to regenerate that, make it something positive and know the difference between rap and hip hop and actually how not to sell yourself out in your music. So from that one, I would say that. And then the next one, I would say the science of science and the science in science by uh, African creation energy. And I say that because that goes oh, yeah. very heavy into critical thinking, which again is super important because if you don't know how to perceive the concept of defining who you are, then everything else is just gonna fall apart from there. And so that's a good foundation for that. That's it for me. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Well, with that, we're going to give it a close. Um, you, uh, uh, e, you right. know, I, I, I got the top assist in the in the game. You might have got the MVP. I got the top assist, though, in the game. Uh, uh, I hope you make a whole lot of points today. And I think, <laughs> I think we, I think we had a great show. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, share it. Like the video. And don't forget, I asked the question in the beginning, is there a such thing as a black culture? If you agree, if you think it is, put a yes in the comments. If you disagree with ease, ease assessment, put a put a uh I mean, yeah, put a yes in the comment and tell us why. If you agree with ease assessment, put a no. Peace and power. what I've been talking about entropy and actually to the to the microphone thing that we just did it's not a matter of bringing it back or hoping it comes and that's what I was trying to get to when I, I said this is just what the fuck we do if you put us in this genre of music we are gonna funk it up because that's who we are we got into country music and we funked it up and we made it rap da, 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 da. we made whatever we do look like us just like any other people but for us specifically that's what we do so whenever these white folks rub each other out and, and do whatever they're doing, as long as we standing, African culture continues on because African people are here. It's just a matter of learning instead of trying to call it a microphone to simply let it be. If we set up, the three of us set up a commune somewhere, we ain't got to have a whole bunch of fucking rules. It's like we talked about before. We ain't got to have a bunch of rules. We don't interact with each other because of the rules that we came across in the book. We interact with each other because that's who the fuck we are. And now we've gotten to a point in life we realize, oh, this is just who the fuck I am. It becomes easy and easier to just be who the fuck I am. And our culture, our expressions and all of that shit, our values, all that shit, will, the values will already be there because we've done the work to uncover that shit and build on that shit. And so it'll come to be. We don't have to do anything. We just have to simply have to be. We have to be that microphone without calling it a microphone. Just have to be what we are. But most people can't, can't, can't understand that shit.